Hex beam centre posts, this is a subject I need to talk a little bit about um, and why I came to the decisions that I did in order to make my field portable hex beam, okay? So as before in my other videos there, I just want to go through a little bit of theory here um, because there's three main types of centre posts that we tend to use on hex beams and we're going to go through those. Um, the first one, um, obviously this is not to scale, as a coaxial uh, centre post and this is something that I'm, I'm working uh, on as a side project so if you can imagine um, imagine looking at side on so this is our centre post like so okay and I've drawn it a little bit bigger okay through the middle of this you've got uh, 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 another piece of metal so this is going to be like an aluminium tube and you've got another aluminium tube so we'll draw that to be your assembly like so so that's what's on the inside looking from the plan you would be looking like this okay so imagine this as your outer shield and this is your uh, inner core conductor so from there you have um so this this would be actually made for 50 ohms um there is online calculators that you can do but you it does come down to issues when it comes to putting on your connections for the bands, but I'm not going to get into that too much just now. But from here, you have bolts coming out, and then you have a stay here like this. One, three, not to scale, obviously, okay. So these are connected to the center conductor but they're not touching here, so there's be a little insulator around here. Okay. And on this side, it would just be a bolt, and it would be connected like so, like this. Um, there's not a lot of manufacturers actually show you the inside of their centre post. Um, K4KIO does, all credit to him. He's prepared to show you the detail. Like so. So that's our coaxial centre beam. And if you're looking down, um, that, that the bolt would be here. It would be coming across. There's a little insulator here. And it comes out this side. And like that here. Something. Something like that is crudely. So that's our coaxial um, centre post. And that's something that I'm working on at the minute. Now, I think most of us, if I've been involved with amateur radio for any length of time, we've heard of ladder line or parallel feeder. Well, you can use the same principle to actually create a hex beam centre post. And um, Ant down south, um, and I'm going to murder your call sign, so I'm just going to put it on the screen. And he makes a, a portable hex beam like this, and it's a really good uh, system of what he's got. Um, so you can imagine you've got two pieces of conductive material, so i.e. Um, aluminium, like this. So this is like a parallel feeder. So this side to just draw these on. So one side your your inner and one side is, is your outer and you hook obviously your elements to, to, to each side. So these actually stay separated. But what is critical is that size and also the size in the middle here. So that size. Um, whatever that may be. Again, there's calculators for actually doing this. Um, um, Chuck KK6USY, he's actually making one of these and he's actually shown some pictures uh, already and it looks really, really good. But if you can get this size right and the size in the middle right, you can actually create a 50 ohm feeder. That's another option. But when it comes to connecting it to the um, to the base plate, that becomes a bit more of an issue, certainly with um, off-the-shelf items. Now, the third option, which is the simplest, this is what I'm doing. And this is what actually K4KIO actually does, shows. So you can imagine here that we've got a... He uses PVC. I've used aluminium. Um, we'll use a different colour this time. And what he does is he uses coax jumpers, all right? 
So um, you could have um, Right, it's not the best best there, but what we'll do is we'll, sh we'll show you. So we've basically got coax that runs down the middle, okay? One goes to one side, goes like that, and then comes off of here into the coax, and here like so. Um, sorry, like that, coax, and here. And this is our feed point would be up here. You always feed the hex beam from the top here. So you'd have a connection here and you'd have your coax, which goes away back um, to your radio. So these are coax jumpers. So these are 50 ohms. So you've probably got a little bit of an impedance bump between here, but it's, it's nothing to worry about. So and that's what I'm going to show you. And that's what I've done. And it's by and far the easiest way if you have uh, limited resources. OK, so that's our that's our three types of hex beam centre posts and different ways that you can actually feed the wires. Now I just need to find my centre post. Now, before I go any further, it's always important um, to actually consider choking. Um, and so this is this is our ballon, if you want to call it that, but it's a one-to-one -one choke. And this is to stop any common mode current coming down the, um, coming down the shield of the coax. You probably wouldn't notice it in terms of uh, in the radio common mode but what it would do is it does affect your uh, radiation pattern so it's good practice and if you look at any commercial hex beam they have a common mode choke um, again details are down in the description uh, in the bill of materials and this is just six uh, type 31 beads um, which is obviously um, I think this was actually from the data from Steve G3 TXQ and the coax on this choke this is a type of RG142 it's a high power coax um, so no problems with running, you know, kilowatt or a bit more if you can in your country. So we'll just run through this here. What I should talk about first is at the top here, we've got some holes. And these holes are actually for hooking on our uh, support ropes, if you've seen that video. So there's six of these and you just bring up the S hook, hook it on there and you're good to go. Most commercial hex beams have a cap on here and they have an eye bolt of sorts. Usually it's an M6 eye bolt hook it to that. I've just done away with that and drilled the holes in it and that keeps it a little bit simpler. All right, so this is a five band version. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, which is 10 meters. If I wanted to add six meters, all I need to do is add another one of these clamps, a little bit of coax and connect it on there. All right, so you can see these little bits of coax jumpers. They're slightly too long, but I wasn't uh, bothering about that. But, just, but this mast is um, 20 millimeter aluminium. It's got a two mil wall. So that's what I just I decided to use, and it's fine. So then on that I have these RSB um, uh, hose clamps or tube pipe clamps, used commonly in hydraulics. Very very inexpensive. They're like 70 pence each, something like that, about a dollar each. Um, and I basically just clamped these. And obviously these these bolts are insulated from this because you don't want them touching. So I've just put cap screws, stainless steel cap screws all the way through and on, on the other side I've got flat washers and I've put my um, coax jumpers on. Now it's very important that these coax jumpers and this is RGAX is that you use um, something called um, liquid electrical tape and you want, I've given these two coats and I might actually give them a third but you want to stop getting any water into these okay. So that's what's good about the coaxial feeds or the, or the parallel fed centre posts you, you won't have that issue. All right, so we've got five of these, and then we've got one, two, three, four of these jumpers. From This is 17 meters, coming all the way up to 20 meters. Now, this is where it gets a little bit complex, and this is where I've modified this clamp, but you don't have to. So if you want to, I've got, on this side, I've actually just got a couple of wing nuts, and that's where we hook in our, our, our elements, our wire elements, still to make the video on that. And on the other side, you can see that's where we've got our choke ballon. So I've actually opened up these clamps ever so slightly to take it through. So our electrical connection goes all the way through from here to here. And that just made things a little bit neater. But what you could do is you could actually connect your coax here and basically just run it up over down the side, down the back. 
Um, and if you look at the end of that, you could see that there's just an SO239 and I just connect that to my coax. So that's really quite nice and simple. So there's not a lot to this. And if you're limited to tools, um, you know, you, you can make this with, <clears throat> with not very much. These uh, poles are not expensive, they're about £10, 10 bucks, whatever you may be. Perhaps you can get them locally. They tend to be a bit more. If you go to like your, uh, here we have um, B&Q, but in the States it would be uh, like a Home Depot. Might be a little bit cheaper. Now these are actually set distances, and the distances are used as, are as per K4 KIO. Those are close enough for me. You can see I've got little markers here with the, my paint markers, where I've got them on there. So again, look down in the description to the bill of materials, look at the centre post clamp, and you will get these sizes. Now, there's a little jubilee clip here, hose clamp. This is basically to bottom out on the centre post, so it bottoms out on this, so I know it doesn't, uh, it won't go any further, and it's always at the correct length. Now, I leave the centre post always connected, sorry, the base plate always connected to the centre post, because the way that I've done it, I can't get access to the screw. So if I turned it around a bit, it would have been fine, but I can't get in with the Allen key. It's a smaller one, obviously. So for demonstration purposes, I've just taken this off. But if I'm going to use this, I just leave it connected all the time, okay? But that just provides a stop. On the bottom here, you can see that I have a, a, a PVC cap. And the reason that I do that is I don't want to damage the end. So it goes through here. And I actually put this into my 11 meter YMO mast, all right? So I don't want to damage the end to prevent it going in. So when it's just getting stored, I'll just get a bit of tape. And I'll put that around there to get a new bit of tape, which I'll, I'll, I'll do later, okay? So really not a lot to this. Um, the choke's been obviously lined with glue lined heat shrink there to stop the water getting in it here. So you don't have to worry about this getting wet because it's been coated with the liquid electrical tape. Only thing you would need to do is if you hook up your coax to here, maybe put some self-amalgamating tape if you're just doing it for a few days a week. But if you're putting it up for longer, maybe put electrical tape on top of the self-amalgamating tape. And then just holding that in place is just cable ties or zip ties, depending the part of the world that you are in. Um, again, there's another view of the, the connections where I connect the wires. You can see that I've got two um, plain washers there. So these just go over. So I'm using stainless steel rope. Um, again, look for that video. It'll be linked in the playlist down below. And you can just hook on your wire, tighten it up. And that gives you your electrical connection, spring washers on there too. So incredibly simple, guys. Um, really not a lot to it. So if you haven't already done so, have a go. Um, and you really can't go far wrong. Okay guys, 73, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.